A Stuart Beam Engine Refurbishment, Part 7. Setting the valve timing, adjusting the main bearings and making fine adjustments. Starting off with setting the valve timing. Before you can successfully set the timing of a model steam engine, you do need to know where the slide valve is relative to the eccentric position. So I'm starting this video by showing the removal of the steam chest cover so I can have a look inside. I've had to take off the displacement lubricator and I'm having to move this part so I can get at this nut. I'd better get my torch because it's going to be quite dark inside there. I'm rotating the flywheel in the direction that it normally goes and as you can see the valve opens a lot at the bottom but not much at the top so the valve is not in the right position. If you've been following this series you probably realise that the steam engine runs ok anyway but the running of the engine will be improved once I've adjusted the valve gear to the correct position. And because this is a beam engine it's not quite as simple and straightforward. I have to remove this crossbar so that I can rotate the valve spindle and adjust the position of the valve relative to where it is on the valve spindle. The valve drive block is threaded and so is the valve spindle. So as you rotate the valve spindle itself it moves the position of the valve up and down. Very simple, very straightforward. And here you can see I'm just dropping the position of the valve. The next step is to refit the crossbar, rotate the crankshaft and see where the valve is this time. So the general plan is adjust the valve spindle position, refit the crossbar, rotate the crankshaft. If it's not right, remove the valve spindle crossbar, rotate the valve spindle, refit the valve spindle crossbar, Rotate the crankshaft to make sure that the valve travels an equal distance over the ports and if it doesn't then you need to re-evaluate your life, go to the doctors and increase your medication. Whichever way you do it the principle is the same, you need to rotate the crankshaft until the valve moves an equal distance over the ports. In this clip I'm using a small allen key to adjust the position of the eccentric that drives the valve and for the purpose of the video only I've advanced the valve, so now what's going to happen is the valve is going to try and admit the steam, or in this case compressed air, before the piston has reached the end of its travel. And you know that the slide valve is in the correct place in the steam chest when the compressed air is admitted to the cylinder at the same point at each end of the stroke. And the best way to do this is to allow some compressed air into the steam chest, but not too much because if you put too much in there you're likely to hurt yourself. You need just enough pressure so that you can feel the push as the air is admitted to the cylinder at each end, but not enough air pressure to snatch the flywheel out of your hand. So just to recap, the slide valve is in the correct position. It travels an equal amount over the ports relative to the rotation of the eccentric. So all you need to do now is put the eccentric in precisely the right position. So which is the right position? At the moment, the engine is quite advanced. Admission is very early, a little bit too early, so I keep backing off the eccentric so it admits the steam, or in this case compressed air, slightly later. And at this point the engine is still admitting very early, but if I increase the pressure of the compressed air and spin the flywheel, the engine runs OK. The problem is the engine will not run slowly on low pressure, so here once again I'm adjusting the eccentric's Allen Grub screw and I'm backing it off and this has the effect of retarding the timing, so the steam or compressed air is admitted later. But as you can see, I really did start this off very advanced for the purpose of the video. I would normally do this really quickly, but I'm trying to show you how to do it, so I'm doing it slowly. It's getting closer, so I'm just going to check that the valve linkages are tight, because if this valve linkage moves about, then you're never going to get an exact setting. As you can hear, the engine is making a bit of a clunking noise. It's not exactly a sharp knock, it's just a bit of a thump. You'll see why later on in the video. On a steam engine, early admission of the steam is much preferred to late admission because it cushions all the moving parts. The accepted method for steam admission on a steam engine is when the piston is just before top dead centre or bottom dead centre because it's a double acting piston. This cushioning effect makes it so that all of the moving parts do not clunk at the end of their travel. On this engine, some of the clunking is caused by the crankshaft rattling about in the bearings, so I'm going to fix that first. After I put the engine back together initially, I realised I'd done it wrong. I'd put the two bearings in the wrong position, because one of the bearings has part of it machined away, and that is the one that is supposed to be up against the crank web. 
but unfortunately I fitted it here on top of the pedestal, so I'm removing it, and I'm going to remove the other one and switch them around. These gunmetal bearing blocks are held to the bed plate and the pedestal by two BA bolts, and unfortunately there's no clearance for a socket. As you can see in this clip, one side of the bearing has been machined down to be thinner than the other side, and it's the thinnest side that has to go up against the crank web. But before I can do that, I have to remove the other bearing. This is the one that's supposed to go on the pedestal. At the moment, the connecting rod swinging about like this is really annoying me. I'll just put it up on top of the beam, like this. That's better. I've learnt to move things out of the way if they annoy you, because otherwise you just get more and more annoyed. And that's why it was a good idea to move my wife out of the family home and suggest that she lives in a flat. It was either that or the acid bath. In this clip you can clearly see the difference in the two bearings. I don't know why I didn't spot this the first time round. These gunmetal bearings are very well made like everything else on this engine. And it occurs to me that the man who built this engine was a very good model engineer. The bearings though do need a small amount of adjustment because they are a little bit sloppy on the crankshaft. And I'm doing this by rubbing the surfaces on some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. If you're thinking about doing a job like this for the first time, do not get carried away. You don't need to use a power tool like a belt sander for this job. Just some gentle rubbing on a piece of 400 wet or dry sandpaper should be sufficient. A different technique needs to be employed if the bearing blocks are really badly worn, and they are many and varied, and I will discuss these in a future video. That's one down, one to go. I'm doing the other bearing now, exactly the same, 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper, and I'm not removing too much metal. If you remove too much metal, then it's not the end of the world, but you will have to shim the bearings as you tighten them up. The best way to do this job is to remove just enough metal, so that you can tighten the bolts fully that hold the top cap onto the bearing, and everything's fine. You certainly don't want them to be tight on the crankshaft. Once the bearings have been adjusted by the wet or dry sandpaper, it's very important to remove all the grit from them. A test fit on the crankshaft verifies that this bearing is okay. It's a really good fit, just enough room for some oil to get in there between the crankshaft and the bearing. And as both bearings are now okay, they can go back onto the engine. The usual word of caution when fitting gunmetal bearings or working with gunmetal in general. Gunmetal is a very soft metal so do not over tighten the steel bolts that hold the parts together, otherwise the bearing will distort and suddenly become inexplicably tight. So that's the bearings refitted, the crankshaft and the eccentric refitted. It's time to refit the crank pin to the engine. The crank pin fits to the crank web, but it needs to go through the big end first, and you will notice that I'm holding the other end of the crank pin with a bent piece of brass sheet held by some substantial pliers. All I need to do now is tighten the grub screws on the flywheel and the eccentric. As you can see by this clip, the timing is currently set very advanced, and I can feel the pressure at each end of the stroke, but the engine still runs, it runs fine, but it will not run slowly. It sounds better, but it's not quite there yet. When I first put this engine back together, I immediately detected three things. One is the timing was out, the second one was a thump from the bottom end, and a click from the top. This is the forked end that goes onto the beam. This is not particularly that bad a fit, but there is a little bit of play, and there's quite a bit of side slop. So the click is the connecting rod moving from side to side on the beam. That's easily fixed. All I had to do was put some shim washers between the two internal surfaces of the fork against the beam. Several viewers took the time to write in to tell me, we didn't like the way you ran the engine at that speed, it didn't look right, beam engines look silly running at that speed. Well, yes, I'm aware of this, but life is a bitch and then you die. I have to test it at this speed to make sure that it's going to be okay. It is the way of things, so I will continue. Well, nothing fell off it, and it's running better, it's sounding better, 
I'm just double checking the fine tuning of the timing, and here's where getting very anal takes over. I call it pencil sharpening syndrome. So you have a pencil, and you feel at the point, and it's not very sharp. So you put it in the pencil sharpener, and after a while you get it really sharp, then you touch the end to test it, and the tip is so fragile it breaks off. So then you sharpen it again, and then you tweak it again, and eventually common sense prevails, and you sit at a happy medium. And that's what I'm doing with this engine. It now runs very well slowly and very well quickly. I'll just give it a little bit of a tweak more. Yeah, I'll just sharpen the pencil just a tiny little bit more. That's it. The engine is fine. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.